Recently, I went on vacation, and thanks to my boss letting me go. And we, the boyfriend and I, decided we wanted to travel back to Ohio, which we've been away from for about a year now. So, on that trip, we took two rambic, rambunctious little puppies. This is Captain and it's Neil. And <laughs> introducing Captain here, he is about two years old. He is a rescue as well. Both of my pups are rescues. He's traveled across the country once when we came out here the first time. So he's, he's a little, uh, what's the word, uh, seasoned with it, I guess. He's picky. He doesn't like many people. He's, as I said, a rescue, so he can be a little aggressive, unfortunately. We, are, we just started training yesterday to kind of combat that. So that's one con we have when we're traveling with dogs. And he's, another con is he's currently diagnosed with heartworm, which he's not allowed to be very excitable or have a lot of exercise or anything like that. So we have to keep him really calm. Pro to that though, he was drugged the whole time. So oh. this is Captain. And to Neil. She is about one years old and she's a rescue as well. She has the furthest she's traveled is from Texas to Denver and that was before we got her. That was when she was rescued. She was a cemetery puppy. She was actually found in October around a cemetery with her pups, with like her other, not she wasn't pregnant, but her other siblings. Siblings, yes. She is a stoic pushover. She doesn't really do anything. She's a, she's a great dog. She's very friendly, and she never gets aggressive or anything like that, so she's wonderful to travel with. And of course, she's at puppy age, and this is my Tennille. And some people would say that they do look very similar, that they could be siblings, but they're not. When you look at them a little bit closer, you can see that they have very different facial structures. And to Neil, that, this picture is a little bit old. She's actually larger than Captain now. So, the trip from Ohio to Colorado. Here's a nice little glimpse into what I had to deal with. Originally, it is an 18 and a half hour drive, and it turned into 24 hours. It was a, it was a thousand and two hundred miles. It was very fun, fun, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's without stops, 18 and a half hours. So with stops and with dogs, it turned into about 24 hours, thanks to the two-hour time difference between Colorado and Ohio. So much fun. So my, oh, and we're going through six states, two of which are my favorite, Nebraska and Ohio. I'm being very sarcastic. They're way too wide. I hate them so much. My co-pilot is my boyfriend, Ian Stewart. This is us, ironically, wearing the same skirt. I did not find that this morning. <laughs> uh, this is our first road trip. We've done it once before. We did it out to Arizona when we lived out there for a little bit. He, so we've been on four cross-country cross road trips, but he's only really made two contributions, right? Because the first time, this was him. He didn't have a driver's license, so he slept a lot of the time. He doesn't know that I use this picture. <laughs> he's 25, he's six months younger than me. And he only recently started driving uh, in 2013, I believe, with my mother's and my help. So he only has about three years of experience. Three-ish. So, three-ish. Yes, three-ish. And our relationship has been five years long and strong. Could we do it? Could we handle two dogs for 24 hours in six states? While we were on this trip, I wanted to kind of get a feel for what we would have to do for two dogs. So chronologically, not top five, but just you want to do these top tips in order. First would be to pack your toys, foods, treats, and a gallon of water. What I did, because you don't want to be using your own water bottle. You're going to go through them pretty quickly, and you don't want to rely on water fountains at stops. So what we did was take an Arizona iced tea gallon, and we, we cleaned that out, and we filled it up. So that's what we ended up using a lot. And of course, toys in the back, just in case they get a little rambunctious. <laughs> Speaking of that rambunctiousness, Captain was drugged already because of his heartworm pills. But we did ben give Tennille Benadryl to drug her up a little bit so she would be not so puppy-ish. And you want to give them food and potty 20 minutes before you start packing the car, because as soon as they see you packing the car, they're done. They're just hyped up, and they're like, oh my god, we're going on a road trip! <laughs> and you won't get them to go potty, and then you're going to have to stop an hour into the car trip, car trip when you don't want to do that. And you'll want to put a protectorate in the back seat just in case one of them gets sick. And depending on your car, we have seat buckles in the back. We have a, a normal sedan. And I didn't want them laying on that. They'd be really uncomfortable, so I put blankets there at, to combat that. 
<laughs> and again, breaks every three to five hours with long walks and exercise. Otherwise, you're going to get this in the back seat of your car. You don't want that. <laughs> <clears throat> and you're going to want to have treats on hand during your human meals. So when you, the person that's having the meals, you're going to want to have treats on hand because they're going to want to steal some of those french fries. Again, you're going to want to give them attention and reassurance, some love throughout the time, otherwise they're going to get very needy and they'll just look at you very sad. Top three, what not to do. Do not wait for them to whine for potty breaks, otherwise you're going to have a very nasty aroma in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, I took the snap for my friends, so yes, it's covered up with a little... But yeah, that was her the entire time. Uh, do not pack away the food, water, or toys in the back seat. In, in the trunk, you want to keep it in the back seat so it's easy to get to. And again, keep those treats on hand for when you're eating your own meals. <laughs> otherwise, you're going to have dogs in your lap like this when you're eating your meals, and you don't want that. Last but not least, do not wait until you're parked to leash. Otherwise, you're going to have dogs run away. And luckily, Tanil was the one that ran, and she's very good at listening, so she came right back. <laughs> so keep your dogs leashed before you park, because they get really crazy, and they're just like, I want to get out of here. Get me out. Last but not least, I'm very happy that I did take my puppies with me back home, because, of course, a dog is the only thing on earth that loves you more than he loves himself. And it's very true, and I'm very glad that I had them. Even though they were a little bit of a pain, they did reassure me throughout the time that we were back at my mother's house that they enjoyed their time there. Thank you.